All right, so my topic was should everyone go to college, and it's presented by myself, Garrett Gomez. Is that the eight? Okay, so a common question asked by every high school student, high school senior specifically, and I've been asked it maybe 30 times in the last three weeks. Actually, we'll decline that because people know where I'm going to college. But it's where you go into college. It's a question every, every single one of us has been asked. If you haven't been asked that question, please raise your hand. My point is that. So what it does is when someone asks this question, it puts pressure on them. It makes them automatically think, hey, that's the only socially acceptable option. Everyone thinks, hey, I'm graduating college, I'm graduating high school, I have to go to college in order to make a good living. Um, and what people don't realize is that they have other options. There's plenty of other options. You can just go right into the workforce, which many people do. And if you play your cards right, sometimes you can make a fairly decent living out of that. And there's also vocational schools that we can all go to. Um, and simply put, not everyone is suited for college. Some people get down there, they've never had any sort of responsibility, and they just don't know how to handle themselves, and they end up wasting their time and their money, and they don't get anything out of it. Now, there are some advantages to colleges, like everything. There's, uh, there's positives and there's negatives. And what a lot of people cite is they match the growth of job markets. Now what people say is 90% of all the fastest growing uh, jobs in America require post-secondary degrees, post-secondary forms of education. And whenever we're saying post-secondary, we're talking about beyond high school. Um, and they're saying that if we don't adjust and uh, go get post-secondary education, they're going to be left behind. There's not going to be any jobs left for you in the future. Another uh, defense for everyone going to college is that we need to work smarter as a nation to be able to hang in the international economy. Because simply put, other countries can work cheaper with unskilled labor than what we can. So if we were to just send everybody into coal mining, there's gonna be a country, some other place where they don't have the minimum wage laws and everything, and they're gonna be able to do it cheaper, and their product's gonna sell better than ours. Um, and there's also a ripple effect that occurs with the college education. So whenever, with that being said, both my parents have gone to college. Both of them graduated from A&M. So going through this whole process, they knew what to do. They knew to get me signed up for classes that would prepare me for my SAT, my ACT. Knew when to take it, helped me set it up. And I really, I had it made when it was coming to applying for college. And for first generation students, it's just really hard if, few, if their parents have not gone to college. It's very difficult for them to do. Also, not only just being able to navigate the ropes, but 60% of kids whose parents have advanced degrees get all A's in high school, compared to only 27% of stu uh, children of high school dropout. And that's a significant amount whenever people are looking at your grade point average and your class rank in terms of getting into college. Now there's also some disadvantages to college. There's very low graduation rates. So out of high school, what the nation's saying is that 45% of us high school graduates will attend college, but only 50% of us will graduate. And simply put, that's a waste of time and money for those 50% who do not make it. Uh, it wastes time, and, it, and of people who do graduate, 40% graduate in four years, and that bump, the number bumps up to 60% to after six years. So this is delaying their salary, delaying their salary, increasing the amount of debt they need to take on to live the extra two years, and it's just making it to be a longer and more expensive endeavor for them. Um, there's also a tremendous amount of debt that comes along with college. Now there was a survey done by U.S. News that they polled all kinds of colleges from across the nation to find how many students, first off, how many students still had debt at time of graduation, and on average, what that amount of debt was. And on the upper end of the spectrum was the University of Notre Dame. 56% of all graduates of the college had college debt, and the average was $25,595. And that is a lot of money, at least relative to us. We're not making big bucks at all. We're working $10 an hour. And if you're working during college, you're not going to be making big bucks either. 
So that's a substantial amount of money to have to pay back. And on the lower end of the spectrum was Harvard. They still had 53% of all graduates have debt, but the average was only $10,465. Now that, nowadays, that is still a fairly nice used car, which can be used. Um, there's also a loss of value in degrees nowadays. Um, college graduates are increasingly having a hard time finding a job. And one example of this is law school employment. The amount of law school graduates that were able to find a job in their field was at 91.9% in 2007. And by 2015, only 59.9% of law school graduates were able to find a job. And there was an example of this in an article I read. A woman went to school and graduated in 2013 and she wasn't able to find a job in her field and she applied to, she said, hundreds of places and it wasn't like not even relevant to law school at all. And a lot of them turned her, turned her away because she was overqualified. Um, and this is not just a phenomenon in the law school realm of the world. The total unemployment of college graduates was 5.5% in 2007 and by 2015 it had also increased to 7.2%. Simply put, there's a low demand of jobs for the people that have high school, have high advanced degrees. There's, you can't look in your newspaper every day and see an ad that says lawyers needed. You can go be a paper boy, throw on papers if you want to, but you can't be a lawyer. And there's low demand and there's a high supply, and that just it never seems to work out when that happens. An example is. In the, there was an article in the Chronicle of Education about a man who had received his master's degree in English and he was unable to find any kind of work in any kind of English related job and he wound up having his own little business in landscaping, not making near what he figured he would after encountering his whole college experience. There's also lower level job openings which are simply there needed for society to function. At one point <laughs> at one point in your year, pretty much every year, you're gonna need a carpenter, an electrician, or a plumber. That's a matter of fact. And these <coughs> jobs cannot be outsourced to India. We can't telemarket and we can't like phone call a person in India and say, hey, come fix my septic system. That's not how that works. And the workforce migration with everyone going to college is what's caused this shortage. People are going to college getting their degrees, and then simply there's not enough people that's going to fill these lower level jobs. And with this, the lower level jobs, it's a seller's market. There's not much of a supply, so therefore the price level goes up, and people are able to bump up the prices a little bit. You get a little bit higher salary than what you would have figured. There's also benefits to vocational schools. Um, people go to college to improve their chances of making a good living and vocational schools do just that for you. They're short, typically between two months. It can be as low as two months and it could be as high as a couple years, but it's usually not the full-blown four years that college is. Hands-on, you're working very closely related with your teachers and the actual stuff that you're going to be doing. And it's specialized, so you're basically cutting out that buffer year that most people have at college where you're trying to figure out what you're doing. It's completely cut out, you know what you're doing, you're getting to it. Graduates are also able to find a job easy because vocational schools are centered around economic demand. So if there's a large demand for mechanics, UTI's enrollment's gonna go up, they're gonna expand the kind of courses they're offering. And they're all, these vocational schools also work with the employers themselves so that they know how to train their uh, students to make sure that they get a job once they graduate. Now what can we do about this? Like I said, college is not suited for everyone, so as us high school seniors going out to the world, we need to research all of our options. Don't just assume that going four years is the automatic, picture perfect way to go. You need to weigh all benefits and drawbacks to all of your options before making a decision. And choose wisely. And here you can contact me, there's my phone number, my email, my website, and my Twitter handle. Hit me up with a follow. You know it. Thank you. Oh, thank you.